Children as young as five are at work in virtually every country of the world. Censorship undermines all other human rights. Torture is routinely practiced in over 90 countries. Ethnic cleansing is the genocide of the 1990s. Several million people have been disappeared since the 1960s. A week of special programs, Human Rights, Human Wrongs, starts tonight at 9.35 on BBC Two. The blackest of conspiracies. From this very room, we shall become lords of creation. A reluctant hero. You let your friend down in combat, and you're dishonored. I can live with that. Two brain fried hippies. Time's come to fight back. And what do you suggest we do? Sneer them into submission? We have advantages. We have decent numbers. We have surprise. We have a raving lunatic on our side. Everyone has weaknesses. In a fight for the very survival of the planet. This, if you like, is Genesis. BBC Two presents Ben Elton Stark, starting Wednesday at 9.25. The Battle of Wills develops into full confrontation between Prime Minister Francis Urquhart and the King, Michael Dobbs's political drama on BBC One now. And here on BBC Two, Michael Dobbs is helping Clive Anderson with his parliamentary probing. Welcome to Notes and Queries, the programme of unanswered questions and questionable answers. And the first query this week was posed by Donald Armstrong of Liverpool, and he wants to know what's the best strategy to adopt when driving a train across a shaky bridge? Well, this is something I've uh, lain awake um, all afternoon worrying about, I must say. But, Carol, you're a trained engineer, mm -hmm. so you should be mm -hmm. able to tell us. Yeah, we do need a couple of things, funnily enough, to answer this question. And one, surprisingly, is a train. Yes. And, uh, and another is a bridge. Well, this is a beautiful model you've made, <laughs> Carol. This is yes, fantastic. I'm going to bagsy driving it. And this is a very little shaky bridge, specially designed to be similar to the one in the film Northwest Frontier. Yes, indeed. That was, in fact, inspired the question, because... Uh, he wanted to know whether it was best to take the uh, bridge at a rush, which happened in uh, Round the World in 80 Days, or do it slowly, which is the way Kenneth Moore did it. Oh, there we go. In uh, Northwest Frontier. Stand by, Gupta. This is it. Well, I think he made it. Yes, he did. Well, well Eventually. done. Well done, Kenneth. Yeah. Now, you see, the correct thing to do, Clive, if you were Kenneth Moore, is to approach the bridge, get out, do a structural survey, get back in, put it all into your portable computer. A week later, yes. it'll tell you what to do, which could mm. be reverse out. But well, a week some... is quite a long time, even if it you're is. going by yes. network so south-east, isn't it? So you've got to look at what your... <laughs> What your natural reaction might be, what yes. would it be? Well, my natural reaction now is to go slowly, because I've seen Kenneth Moore do it. <laughs> and that is a sort of natural reaction. You're inching away, trying not to yeah. cause too much Well, let's try problem. it then, shall we? All right, so yep. here we are. This is the train they're going to be using on our side of the Channel Tunnel, I think. So here we go. <laughs> Whoa, I'm going to inch very slowly. And this is especially weakened, so it might crash. And, oh, <laughs> come on, Kenneth. Yes, yes. And I've made it. Well so, done, So, Doctor. well done, little train. So, Absolutely. So, does that prove that's the correct way to do it? Well, it is the correct way to do it, because if you analyse what's happening to the bridge, you see, there are various weights and loads being applied, and there's the weight of the train that obviously doesn't yeah. change. Right. But then it does have certain effects. There's an impact effect, which is when the uh, wheels hit the joints in the tracks, or there are flat spots yeah. in the wheels, which is going from one right. side to the other, that sort of lurching thing. You know, in the well, you do get that when you come back from the buffet, don't you? Yes, you, you do. Yeah. And it's putting weight, more weight onto one side of the track than to the right. other, you see, which is bad for the bridge. Yeah. And then there's the nosing effect, which is quite interesting, you 
emergency because most trains are actually trying to come off the track at any one time. So that's are like they? A side, yes. Why, like do they, want, they want to be privatised or go by, <laughs> go by road? Or that's what? a sort of sideways effect. Oh, well, I'm going to do another slow, uh, slow crossing here. And all of these Pushing effects luck. are yes. increased as the speed increases. So if you're going very slowly as you are, then those effects really don't come into play. And that is why you're successful at it. Well, I'm still uh, going to pursue the notion that if I go really, really fast at this bridge, it doesn't matter it collapses because I can still get across. Go on, then. Though... So here we go. I go as so fast a speed as I can get up. Go on, then. Which must be at least... Go on, then. Now. Here we go, train. Ah! Oh, it's so nearly made it. It's so nearly made it. Anyway. <laughs> wow. <Well. laughs> well, that was a bit of fun. Now... We move on. Uh, we have a question now posed by someone who has joined us in the studio, David Northmore. Now, what's your question, Mr Northmore? Given that sexual indiscretion no longer seems to cause political resignation, what should or could? Yes. Well, I'm not sure I necessarily agree with the, the premise behind your question, but uh, before we attempt to answer it, uh, let us meet a figure central to what remains perhaps the most famous uh, political and sexual scandal of modern times, the perfumer affair. Uh, please welcome Christine Keeler. Hello, good, good to see you. Um, perhaps we'll just have to remind uh, maybe younger viewers uh, what, what the Profumo scandal was all about and why you were central to it. Uh, but it's right that, uh, what is it, 30 years ago now, uh, you had an affair with uh, John Profumo, who was uh, Minister of War at the time, and simultaneously you had a sexual relationship with the naval attaché at the uh, Russian embassy. Well, uh, the naval attaché was a Russian spy. Yes. And Dr. Stephen Ward, who I was living with, was also a Russian spy. Yes. The, Did you know um, that at the time? I, I, I sort of found that out uh, mm. shortly after I met Jack Perfumo. Yes. Uh, but uh, the only affair that I had with uh, uh, Eugene Ivanov, uh, because the, I the had... The attaché. The attaché. Yes. Was really by force, anyway. Yes. And uh, cause, because he had to compromise me. What, with, by force? I mean, he, yes. what, he, he raped you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm not sure that's emerged as a picture before. But I don't quite understand what you're saying about your role in it. Were you, were you participating in this deliberately as part of a sort of no, I, assist I, the I, Russian plot? Or were you just caught up in it accidentally? I was caught up in it accidentally. I was a young, attractive girl and I worked in a, a nightclub where, where very established people went. And uh, I, I didn't realise that I was actually spying. I delivered letters to the Russian embassy. Yes. Oh, for, for Eugene Ivanov from Steve, Dr. Stephen Moore. Yes. Well, you're delivering letters to the, uh, to the Russian embassy. You must have had yes. some idea that it was to do with... Because we're talking the no. height of the Cold War and... Well, I was, I was only 17 years old yeah. when I went to live with Dr. Stephen Ward. Yes. But even at 17, and assuming you're a naive 17, you'd still know whether you're taking information from a government minister to the Russian embassy. You, you can work out that spying. No, I wouldn't... I wouldn't... I, even though... The information might just have been of how Jack Prefumer was with these men, but I wouldn't, I didn't realize then at that yeah. particular time. I would just recite everything that I knew or found out about, uh, about different people in positions of yeah. power to, to Stephen. Who wasn't there particular, uh, if, wasn't there particular information about when the Americans were going to put uh, nuclear missiles well, into was, Germany? That was the most important. Yes. And did you get that information from John Prefumer? No, Prefume? I did not. But were I, you attempting to? No, never. Do you rather regret it all now? Well, obviously, I wish it had never happened to me, but I am trying now to put the story straight uh, because the men that have got the purse strings to my life and using my photographs and using the same old story of prostitution, of which it never was. And, uh, well, no, no, no I, question of prostitution? Absolutely no question of prostitution. Stephen was never my ponce. It was never a case like that. Yeah. This was just to hush the whole thing up. 